So now we've talked about uh, a common language. We've established what research writing is and why we do it. And I've assigned your first research essay uh, where you were gonna be first creating an annotated bibliography. And after you gather that research, it is gonna build into your first essay. I wanna to talk to you a little bit about MLA style today. Again, we're gonna go over this in greater detail next week, but I do wanna give you a brief overview as well as show you an example of what an annotated bibliography is going to look like. So this is an MLA styled research paper. Um, what I want you to notice is there's no title page, okay? This is simply an MLA formatted essay. Here on the left, you're going to have your name as the student, which in this case is John Smith. You're going to have my name, Professor Dupree. You're going to have the course name, which for this course would be um, English 112, Writing in the Discipline. And then below that, you're going to have the due date of the assignment, okay? It's not the date that you wrote it, it's the actual due date. Um, I want you to see that these margins, uh, right here, this should be half an inch from the top border, but each border should be one inch. Okay, everything should, you should have everything set to one inch around. Here on the right hand side, you can see it's the student's last name and page number that is inserted in a header. And if you do not know how to do that, I will link a YouTube below this lecture uh, to help you understand how to do that in Word. The title is centered. And one thing I want you to note about the title is the title is reflective of the actual paper. It is not reflective of the assignment. So what I don't wanna see is essay one, okay? Or argumentative essay. I wanna see a title that's engaging and that reflects what you're actually writing about. The font of this is Times New Roman and it's in 12 point, okay? And then as you can see, for each new paragraph, the student has indented half an inch. For most of you, that's going to be the tab button on your keyboard. And for each paragraph, we see this very defined introduction. And then when the student starts the new paragraph, we see a new indention right there that indicates, hey, I'm starting a new paragraph. The next thing that I want to show you is the Works Cited page. So this is what is going to come at the very end um, of your paper. Sorry, there we go. Um, this is what's gonna come at the very end of your paper. So after you've written all of your work, you've cited your sources in those paragraphs, the work cited is how you're going to create the citations that you use, the sources that you used. So again, you can see this is the eighth page of the student's research paper. Um, and they have the title very cl clearly here, work cited. As we talked about earlier this week, you can see that everything is alphabetized, okay? Some of these sources had titles, some of these sources um, had authors. So you can see if there's an author, then clearly that's listed first. But if there's no author and there's only a title, then the title was used first. Um, and again, uh, I'm going to go over the nuts and bolts of how to create these citations at a later date. Um, this is just an overview of what this should look like in your essay. And then the next thing that I want to show you and I have this linked in your weekly folder. Um, this is from your textbook, and this is um, the annotated bibliography page. So again, if we reference back to what you're going to be doing over the next few weeks, you're first going to create an annotated bibliography before you jump into essay one. So a working bibliography is a list of sources that you're going to be using for your research project. As you begin to find and evaluate these sources, you're going to record that information that will allow you to find the source again and cite it correctly. The emphasis here is on working because you might create a list of some sources that are not useful. For this reason, you don't have to put every entry into the documentation. Uh, what that means, guys, you might read 10 sources and you may only use five of those and that's okay. Um, you may find 15 sources and use 10. Um, but what this annotated bibliography does is it allows you to have some organization in your research, okay? The following chart 
uh, will help you keep track of the information you can find. These are just three different types of sources. And these are actually the three that I'm going to be going over in great detail next week to show you how to create those citations. But an online digital source, this is typically like a journal from a database. Um, and for you guys, that's going to be your uh, Gaston College Library link. And again, we're going to go over that in further detail next week. But this shows you the information to, co to collect to be able to properly cite that source. Part of a book, again, here is the information you're going to use, and then a print article. Um, and again, we're going to go over that in great detail next week. For other kinds of sources, films, YouTubes, recording visuals, you should also list the information required to document those. Annotated bibliography. So this is a sample of kind of what you're going to be doing over the next couple of weeks. You might want or be assigned to annotate your working bibliography to include the summary of the sources, as well as publishing information, because annotating helps you understand and remember the main ideas of the sources you read. Your instructor, your instructor might ask you to evaluate the source by noting its strengths and weaknesses, or by commenting on the usefulness of the source to your project, and that is what we're going to be doing, and I'll show you an example of that next week. But here is a sample annotated bibliography entry. Right here, you can see the source, okay? This was by uh, Irene Davila. Uh, this is the title of her source. This is the journal that it came out of, the volume, the number issued, the date, the page numbers, the actual database that it came out of, and the link, okay? And so we see that she created her citation. Um, I also want you to note the format. This is left aligned and the other lines have an indention for the new lines of information. And then we see the actual summary that she created. NYU sociology professor Irene Davila explains that programs designed to stimulate tourism in Harlem have largely ignored Latino and Latina residents of East Harlem known as the El Barrio. Rather than blaming the leaders of Harlem's black neighborhoods, which she suggests are seen as marketable to tourists, she questions the anti-Latino bias of the economic policies of the Upper Manhattan Empowerment Zone. Davila calls for a debate about the problems that come with treating culture as a commodity. Although the article is older, Davila's argument is a valuable one. She provides a counterpoint to the idea that the economic initiatives adopted since the 1990s have benefited all Harlemites. I can use her analysis of culture as a product to set up my conclusion. So again, guys, this is what you're going to be doing in the annotated bibliography. When you think about what you're going to be crafting, okay, you're going to be writing an essay over who you think is the most influential leader of your field, all right? And you're going to be uh, arguing why. Why are they the best? Why is Jeff Bezos a great business leader, okay? Why... Um, uh, why is this specific uh, teacher at Harvard University the most influential leader in education right now? Okay, why is Carol Dweck the most uh, influential psychologist of today's time? Uh, this is what you're going to be arguing. So what you're going to be doing is once you find those sources, okay, uh, you're going to cite the source and then you're just going to give me a summary of that source. That's it, that's all the annotated bibliography is. And then once we've crafted this really strong annotated bibliography, we've gathered our sources. We know what those sources are about. We know how we're gonna use them and apply them to our paper. Then we'll go to write the essay, okay? So uh, I hope this was really helpful. Again, please don't stress over, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm gonna put in that citation. I don't know how to cite sources. That's gonna come later. This is simply an overview as uh, you begin brainstorming this week and creating uh, your first outline, okay? You are gonna be really just planning out what you wanna research this week. And next week, we're gonna begin tackling that research. Have a great day and don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions.